All right, everyone, this is Fernando yet again here for another My Movie Review podcast. In this case, having to do with yet another film that was a great throwback, a film that I saw originally in theaters back in the early 2000s. I think I saw it maybe once more on home video or on DVD when it came out afterwards. But then the other day, I got to recently rewatch it, of course, doing this through my usual exercises. And wow, what a great film. I, I remember thinking in theaters it was good, but now it definitely elevated to a great status, all because of the great pacing that the movie has, the slow buildup of tension, the uh, characters that are within it, the storyline, and then, of course, the very, very memorable, horrible, you know, horror stuff that happens here and there. It's definitely a film that caught my attention then, and then now it definitely gets even better. So really great stuff when I realized that this that these type of films become better over age. And of course, I'm talking about what you're looking at now, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the reboot, if you will, from 2003. So let's go ahead and let's do my movie review podcast here, and then I'll end it with my final thoughts associated with the star rating. So first off, I wanted to mention this. Before it came out in theaters, I remember there was a lot of excitement for this movie here in Central Texas. This was because this was during a time period when there were a lot more films slowly but surely being filmed around this area. Michael Bay, as you see there, saw this and he was able to come on board and then he made this film shooting it, especially the outside. Uh, not, he didn't shoot it, but another director did, but he produced it. But this film was shot outside an area nearby Austin, I think less than an hour's throw away or so. So we had a lot of excitement here from actors. I remember reading articles about it in the newspaper. People were just drumming up a bunch of excitement about the idea that a big movie like this was going to be filmed somewhere nearby. And so once that excitement built up to the release of the movie, a lot of us here in Central Texas were able to go out there and watch it and then we got to see at least a lot of references not just to like Travis County where I live at but also to other areas here in Central Texas so definitely nice to see it yet again and then and then realize you know how much excitement it got in fact that house that's featured within the film again it's about less than an hour's drive or so from Austin apparently that house is still visited to this very day by a lot of people here in Texas because they love going and seeing that type of movie history. In fact, seeing some of the clips that people have posted on the internet there on YouTube, apparently there's a big gate in the front. Obviously, like it's to stop people from going all the way to the house. But also there's pamphlets that are there that state, we know you're a fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Here's some information about the house. Please don't trespass, that kind of stuff. So one of these days, I plan on probably going out there myself. You'll definitely know about it ahead of time. I'm going to post a bunch of uh, uh, previews of it, and then I'll be there live streaming if I can, because it still seems to be pretty remote. Uh, so who knows how the live streaming works. But if I can, then you'll see me live streaming right out there, right in front of the infamous Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. And what a great time that would be. So be on the lookout for that sometime soon. It's definitely on my bucket list to do so soon. Now, as far as the movie review itself, first I'll do the good parts, then the bad parts, and then give my overall star rating. Good parts, as I was mentioning earlier, number one, it's got great tension building. I mean, this was a movie that from the beginning, when you saw the camaraderie between that small group of teens, or young adults in this case, they were there just acting themselves, driving a van, going from, uh, I think it was from Mexico all the way up to Dallas, if the movie, if I'm not mistaken, about, you know, going to a Leonard Skinner concert. And so it spent that small time period making you familiar with them. And then that was it. That's what I loved about it. You just got to see enough of them to start liking them, but not enough to get tired of them. I think that was one of the biggest faults of, for example, Cloverfield, which was also a really, really good movie. But for the fact, it spent way too much time at the beginning focusing on that run adult party that was going on within that building and what was that like 20 25 minutes but it felt like it was forever here though you got to spend maybe about five ten minutes at most as you'll see in these scenes here and then finally that's when the action happens that's when they find that young girl out there in the middle of the road which leads to them 
having that horrible, horrible suicide by her. And then, of course, then finally meeting the, the Hewitts, the family that's out there, uh, out there uh, creating their own havoc afterward. And, of course, that leads to all the horror afterward as well. But, yes, that was a really, really great form of slow tension that was building up. This was not a shock movie. Like, this was not one of those movies that was just cheap thrills. I mean, there are every now and then some some sudden surprises. But no, it definitely was more, I guess you could call it, psychological. It was something along those lines. It's like the area around you, the environment, the way it looked, the way it seemed so beautiful, but like eerily quiet at the same time, almost like suffocating when it comes to being out there in the middle of nowhere. It kind of made you realize for these young adults that whatever was happening to them, these main characters, they are pretty much on their own. They would have no chance of having anyone come across them afterwards for any kind of help. And of course, everything else that happened afterward, uh, the massacre that, that, that the title says in the movie itself, ended up claiming their lives. And then all of it was because of the remoteness tied to it. But yes, it was really, really good stuff when it came to the slow build of the tension. I thought the storyline was really good too. I mean, it just gave enough hints here and there of the Hewitt family, especially, of course, of Thomas Hewitt, the infamous Leatherhead or Leatherface when it comes to what's happening to him, um, why he is the way he is, how his family even, like you see those weird cast of characters uh, there within the film, um, how they kind of influence him to be who he is and, and so on. So just enough hints here and there for you to get a tiny bit of, of seeing like what a macabre family this is and that's what the way they are and why they are essentially. Another great thing about the movie, the way it looked, I mentioned that earlier. I don't know why, but the cinematography was just beautiful, just amazing within this film. I love movies that look good, and this was one of those movies, like the coloring within it, the shades within it, even out there in the sun and the Texas heat. I mean, it got to really, really stand out, and then especially when it finally shifted over into the house itself, and you got to see the inside of it, I mean, it just definitely went into a whole other area. Everything looked just disgustingly decaying, slick, oily. There was always water everywhere. There were stains everywhere. I mean, really great stuff when it came to the look of this film. And so that really worked. The acting was top-notch, too. Huge kudos to whoever decided to have R. Lee Ermey, that's right, from Full Metal Jacket, to have him be the sheriff, the quote-unquote sheriff within the film, because it was just perfect instant casting. I mean, having him in that film made you realize that it gave him instant authority, not just because of his voice, but the way he commands things. So having him be in a sheriff role just definitely absolutely works. But you know that Arlie Ermey is almost off. Like, there's something just wrong with him from the get-go because of you know, Full Metal Jacket, you know, the way his character was there, it instantly transfers over to this as well. Like, you know, he's supposed to be a good guy because he's a sheriff, but he's not. You realize that there's these red flags building right from the get go. And so that's why I thought it was picture perfect casting, because something will always be off about him within the film itself. And of course, that was too little too late from the uh, for the teenagers here, for the young adults. In fact, I posit that he was actually the most evil character within the film. Not Leatherface, but in this case him, because of everything that he did and the slow, almost torture that he did to some of the other characters as well. I mean, that's just him. He was just pure evil in that case. The music was pretty good too. It definitely stood out in certain moments. I've heard that. the um, My understanding is the soundtrack seems to have its own following as well. So that was really, really interesting to read. But yeah, all that stuff really stood out. The writing was good. The story was good. Um, again, just enough focus on the characters, but not enough to get bored by them or to get overwhelmed by them. So that was pretty good. Now let's talk about the bad parts. But the only thing that I wish the movie could have explored more was the family itself, the Hewitt family. Uh, like once you got actually to their denizen, once you got to their area, starting off with that, what was that, a gas station? And then also moving on to their mansion. I thought that it was really neat. You got to, to see more of their history. I thought if we got to see how they came to be um, from the beginning, in other words. I mean, you got some hints here and there, especially with, with Mama Hewitt, the way she was describing certain things. But I thought if they would explore more, that would have made it much, much better. Especially with you have that 
full parking lot of other cars of victims that they claim it would have been interesting to see what you know stuff referencing that you know just to showcase how far back as you see those cars there how far back this family was doing what they were doing to who knows how many people my understanding is there was a prequel comic that came out or was it a like a another comic like a, a tag along comic of sorts but it too would showcase some of their information but i thought that was the only thing missing uh, with the with regards to this great film if they would have explored more but the family itself then that would have been really neat but otherwise it was really good stuff so final thoughts when it came to this film i would give it a solid four out of five stars really good action good story Good horror within it, some good jump scares here and there as well. I really thought it was neat too how Jessica Biel's character, um, she was someone that um, came out the hero at the end, but through unusual circumstances. Like in other words, she wasn't just like Ellen Ripley becoming gung ho and ready to, you know, fire off machine guns here and there. No, in, uh, in this case, she was actually the hero by accidental circumstances. It took the lives of other people and not through her fault of course but it took through the lives of other people them dying for her to be able to essentially be the only person remaining and then being able to escape afterward i mean she did do some form of action towards the very end i won't spoil it but she ended up doing something to arlie army's sheriff character that definitely uh, stood out but otherwise um, she was more realistic in this film as someone like if you would imagine a person suddenly caught in this calamity having no idea what to do I thought she did really really well in there too but yes um, otherwise again four out of five solid stars what do you guys think about this Texas Chainsaw Massacre the original reboot if you will from 2003 there were some other movies that came out afterward I have seen the beginning and I think I saw one of the other films afterward, too. I'll have to double check again. But otherwise, yeah, it was a solid film. And again, an exciting time here in Central Texas when it was originally being filmed. Great stuff. And yes, once again, one day I will be out there and then I'll be able to um, obtain footage of the actual house itself. Be ready for that. That's going to be really, really fun. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care. Bye.